。荣恒给我发过来，谢谢。Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? We are at another another location around Chigan. And it's a little bit more serious. Everybody's coming off the bus. They gotta get scanned. They gotta show their QR codes. We have a special QR code for uh, Xi'an and for Shanxi province. This. So you gotta show your code, make sure you're green. Make sure everything's okay. And uh, this is what you got to do, you know, you got to do it. So today is going to be an excellent day. I'm going to break it into a few parts. So you have seen terracotta, right? No, I haven't. Just oh, I'm time. so excited. But it's one of my, my favorite things. No, 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 no. Ah. Later today. Later yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Another video, probably. I think this we're going to split it. This a museum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Han Yang Ling Museum. Yeah, Han Yang Ling. But the, this guy here is uh, Lee Barrett from the Barrett Channel. You might not recognize him from the mask. Yeah. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. I don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a great day. I'm really, really excited to show, because I've been to the Terracotta Warriors. We're going to see that yeah. in a future video. You're going to get a big kick out, out of that. Yeah, also, we got... Oh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I interrupted. He, 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 just, he just kicked Lee to the curb. I just Come kicked Lee. Talk to Glee now. <laughs> you know, poor Lee. Uh, he feels so uh, used and abused. Welcome eh? to another video from Guelo 60. Eh? Today we're going to go uh, take a look at some mausoleums. Eh? The, well, actually, we're going to the Hanyang Mausoleum Scenic Spot Tour fig Figure. Figure. Well, figure. they're missing the E. They're missing the, <laughs> uh, the... Actually, the N, the E, and the E. I've asked you this twice already. Have you seen the Terracotta Warriors? No. So, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I think I think you're going to get a kick out of that. I think Wei Feng's going to get a kick out of it, too. Well, when, it, when, it, when I was helping set up this trip, yeah. I, I uh, sort of made a point of, because it wasn't on the, the itinerary. It wasn't? No, it wasn't to begin with. And I said, oh. well, what about the Terracotta Warriors? And they said, well, it's not on the itinerary. So I said, well... I want to go see it, so bring me in a day early. So they scheduled to bring me in on October the 31st so I could do the Terracotta Warriors because I've never seen it. I mm. want it. If I'm coming to Sion, I want to see the Terracotta Warriors. Yeah. And so does Wei Fong. So uh, we sort of put up a, enough of a stink that they uh, put it on the itinerary, and then we moved our, our date back to November 1st when everybody else got here. So you can thank me for this. Thanks for the stink. Actually, Wei Fong. Thanks for the stink. stink. I'll thank Wei Fong. <laughs> but before we do that, we're going to have a big day today. I'll the, the video for the terracotta is going to be later. I, yeah, I think that's going to be a separate video. I think it's got to be a separate video. Yeah, it's got to be a separate video. Uh, and you'll see a video from Lee, from the Mex... You'll get yeah. it in Spanish, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from the Mexicanos in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hanjing Bis Masulam and this is his wife's uh, Masulam. They uh, buried together. He's the emperor of uh, Han Dynasty, Han the Dynasty. fourth emperor of the Han Dynasty. Fourth, fourth yeah. emperor. Two thousand years ago. Two thousand years ago. It's very interesting. The inside of this place must be must be very like. Like this is the most attention we've had for COVID and for yeah, yeah, dust yeah. and everything. I mean, there's a lot of attention being paid. I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what's inside there. Yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be good, man. Interesting. Tell me the differences between celebration and maybe not celebration isn't a good word, but remembering the dead between the UK and China. Well, they have a thing here in um, China called Tomb Sweeping Day. It's like yeah. a national day where they go and respect the, the dead and they burn items which they believe pass into the afterlife. Clothes, so, money, cars, yeah, jewelry. TVs, everything, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. So you might buy a cardboard BMW and yeah. they set fire to it and burn it and yeah. they believe that passes to their ancestor. They, they, in my opinion, they have a lot more respect for their ancestors here in China than they do in the Western world. On the whole. On the whole. On the there whole. is, that, that, that's a loaded, that's a loaded statement a bit but yeah, it's, it's not it's not across yeah. the board but yeah. i think in general there's there's more respect for ancestors i mean here. here a lot more people get like dead like in america you might have a grave site with just grave 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 yes, grave yeah. grave 
and uh, but but in here you have larger areas dedicated sure. to family tombs where yeah, yeah, you know yeah. where you'll sure. have an entire family b buried yeah. or, or collected together we do do that in england but it's generally wealthy people very wealthy yeah, people will do that like a crypt, big yeah. big crypt but but here they they do but there's, there's something going on here where actually they're not supposed to bury people anymore they're supposed to cremate yeah but burials still do go on you know In America in particular, we just don't have the history long enough to have these sort of burial areas. You can go so far back in history to see how people were preserved. It sort of reminds me a little bit of the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, in America, we have large tombs and monuments to people who have passed that were notable or important for so many different reasons. But the difference is the ones in China go date back so much farther. The, the history and the stories you can tell from them are a little bit richer um, because they have this weird sort of museum-like quality to them. You'll go to America and you'll, you'll also have these sort of things, but the history is not as, as deep. The history isn't, doesn't go as far back as they do here in China. So, so we are underneath these burial mounds right now. So we're checking these ones out. My wife, mm -hmm. we lost some family members, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we go to tomb sweeping day, okay. it's always a big pile of earth, okay. right? Like the tombs are. Mm -hmm. Do you under, Do you know why? Why is Why is it always a big pile of? It seems like in America when we bury somebody, they go deep into the ground okay. and it's flat. But in China, it's up and it's like a hill. Okay. Uh, I explained to you guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I buried my mom, then I understand before I was, I, uh, same question like yeah. you. It's just like, why they have high of the, a big amount of the, the, the dirt on there? For yeah. what? I yeah. don't understand. It's, it's, it's not like that. Uh, they digging uh, very, very deep to the ground. Okay. And kind of like a, maybe five meters, maybe more. Mm. And, and put the M, just like urn, the urn, ashes, yeah, yeah, ashes under the knee, and then they they put back wherever they see like mm. a flat, mm -hmm. and then they made the thing look like a house for them. Oh, it's because uh, let people know this is a grave. Don't touch. Okay. Oh, it's still deep. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I, I always wondered because it's different, you know. In America, mm -hmm. the ground is flat. Oh, okay. And they have a tombstone, you okay. know. Okay. But yeah. but in China, everything is built above. Oh, the wrong you know? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a like a like a yeah. complex, you know. Same thing. You see, you, today after you come to see this, you know, does come from long, long, long time ago. The bigger the, yeah, the bigger the, the house. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are king and queen, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they, they they have to make a big, huge one. Mm -hmm. It's a look like nice, and to now we can see it. Mm. We can mm -hmm. file. Okay. Thank you, Wei Fang. You're welcome. <laughs> you know what I find interesting is that today we're clinging to the now, right? We're just trying to stay on this earth as long as possible. Diet and science and technology and all these things. But back in the day, it was all about trying to make the afterlife as comfortable and as long and as interesting as possible. So tombs and and, and, and these sorts of things were all designed in a way to extend and improve our afterlife. Whereas now, the afterlife <laughs> might be less significant than the current life. And we're like really maximizing technology to try to make, make that the best, best life now possible. <laughs> I always like these things. They're like literally. Hello, 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 hello. hello, hello. <laughs> I like these places. It's it's like the literal exhumed remains of these mounds of this mausoleum, and 
So there's something about seeing the pit, seeing the items in the pit, in their original state, that makes it interesting beats home the reality of what people used to go through in order to build these things. And I don't know what it is about Xi'an, but you know, they've got the terracotta warriors and they've got these sorts of pits. It's, you know, I've been to a bunch of, of these sort of archeological digs in the world and in China in particular. And it seems like there's just a larger quantity of these places in Xi'an. Like they're cornering the market on, on tombs, you know, if that's a thing. Think of how exciting it was to find this stuff. Like, you know what I mean? You're, you got the little brush, you don't know what you're going to get, and all of a sudden you see the head of that cow, and you're like, oh, jackpot! Yeah. I'm not super big on, on museums. Uh, the displays and things like that, they, they appealed to me on a, a very rudimentary state. A good museum, of course, is really, really cool, especially like old fossilized dinosaurs and stuff. But this actually interests me much more when they build the museum around the original burial grounds, around the original tomb. So you're getting a perspective that is like a snapshot in time. And when I look at stuff like this, like this trench here full of all these different artifacts, it just, it fills me with a wonder of what, what was it like to be the person in that trench digging that stuff up and how exciting that would be to be an archeologist and actually psst, psst, ah, got something. Psst, 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 psst. And all of a sudden you see the remains of something and you're not sure what it is and you just keep digging at it, keep digging at it. And all of a sudden a piece of history presents itself to you. When I was younger, before I could even like really, <laughs> oh, what was that? When I was younger, I wanted to, do you know what a paleontologist is? You ever heard that word, paleontologist? Sorry. <laughs> paleontologist, Taman Shijiga, dinosaur. You know dinosaur? Oh, yeah. They would dig the dinosaur. What shall I the show? What do you gonzo? What are the gonzo? Why you jow dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to find dinosaurs so bad. So, why didn't she want to dig a deep one? You know? Amazing. This one on the screen side is the very important. I wish I had a better lens. I could get really, really close to those. You know? you know, when I see stuff like this, I always think, like, I wonder what else is under the ground that no one's ever seen, you know? Well, at least no one's ever seen for quite some time. I mean, who knows? Think about it. Where you're driving right now, if you're driving or sitting in your house, or going to the mall, or doing any number of things. Just think about what could be under your feet right now. There could be a hidden slice of history right now, wherever you are. If you're in America, maybe it's Native American history. If you're in Europe, maybe it's some sort of medieval life that was going on under your feet. If you're in Asia, Thousands and thousands and thousands of years could be existing under your feet, preserved, waiting to be discovered, or maybe never discovered, lost, lost to time. Really, really exciting. There's a lot to be said for looking at history. You know, also you look at history and you can learn from it too. I think especially recent history, like uh, the previous pandemic uh, in, in uh, 1918, you know, we could learn a whole bunch from that, but I feel like some of us have forgotten history and how we handled certain things. And even history to an extent that goes back this far, we can learn how societies happened, how they dealt with certain situations. And we can say, we can improve on our lives because we know this, or, or we can, you know, decide to change things because of how things were done and say, okay, that, that was an experience had, an experience learned from, and we can learn from it again today as much as they could have learned from it way back in the day when they were burying all that stuff there to remember some important fella that at that time, think about that. Think about how important that person was. There was nobody in this entire area that did not know that man. He was, he was like a God among men. And we're walking through this place ignorant to, to that person's life. Uh, I mean, but we can learn a little bit at a time, you know, and that's what we're doing. History, man.
it can teach us all so much. <laughs> now we'll learn more about this when we get to the Terracotta Soldiers. I've been there. Really, really cool place. I can't wait to show it to you again. There's a lot of interesting similarities between this place and the Terracotta Warrior Museum. Inside, beyond these walls, inside the containment area, it's almost hermetically sealed. These, these glass windows protect the area from us because we are, we're disgusting. We're constantly passing off bacteria and viruses that can degrade the material in, these, uh, in the mausoleum area, but they also uh, dim the lights down because lights are harsh to the original state of a lot of those artifacts. As a matter of fact, a lot of the color is retained in a lot of stuff that's buried still in these <laughs> masks. As a matter of fact, a lot of the um, existing artifacts are still buried in the ground and they're gonna be kept there until they can decide and figure out how to preserve them the best way because as soon as they dig them up, as soon as the outside air touches them, they lose that ceiling and they'll immediately start losing the color. They'll start losing that vividness because they're vivid. A lot of these little characters are still buried and probably retain a lot of the original color. You, know, you wouldn't even think that they do have color, but they're actually painted really ornately. It's just, as soon as they hit the air, the air just degrades the paint, you know? And so you have to take a lot of care when you're uh, uncovering a lot of this stuff. Because as soon as you do, it loses its, its luster forever, you know? But right now, onto that stone, the color is still retained as long as no oxygen is penetrating through the, through the rock and getting to it. So it kind of gives you an interesting feeling, right? Because you know there's so much hiding under that stone. It's just waiting for somebody to uncover it the right way. But until they do, it'll stay there waiting for you. Here, for example, you can see like the original garb that people used to wear. The females, the women used to wear something like this and the men used to wear a robe similar to this. Now, I don't know exactly what colors are hiding under that stone, but I imagine a lot of those pieces were painted with vivid colors, vivid yellows and reds from all sorts of dyes and pigments that they had in that area at the time. And all of those pigments and stuff are, could be, could be, I'm not 100% sure, but could be hiding in that stone, you know? Pretty neat. <laughs> to be honest, like, I think a lot of people might not like this video because it's a bit, it might be boring to some, but for me, it's very, very exciting. Yo, man, you got a nice ride, but I just upgraded. Four horsepower, baby. Okay, so we finished uh, taking a look at this underbelly. Now I think we'll, we'll move on some different places. Ooh. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh. Two. Now let's take a look at, at the next. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. This sort of thing Doesn't is interest not you. my thing. In, in this specific road, underneath this stuff, who knows what's there? What's there, there yeah. That's yeah. exciting to me, you know? Genghis Khan was buried with his fortune. They say that if you find Genghis Khan's tomb, Genghis You're Khan's tomb, a rich man. you will be a rich man beyond measure because he oh. pilfered, pilfered? He pilfered the entire continent. You fast forward farther enough in time, all of this shit, all of you, all your worldly possessions, all the people you love, all the places you've gone, will be nothing but a mound of earth, you know what I mean?